Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today, with the anniversary 2948, we have Aegis Dynamics as the featured manufacturer. And what I've been looking forward to the most, I think? Um, I love Aegis Dynamics. I love the fact that these capital ships are within tasting distance of being in the game. And thank God that I am wearing a safety helmet because we have an Idris in front of me and three hauls of ships rather than just one today. And we've got a load of cool flyable ones and a load of ones going back on sale. Uh, that are a lot of people's favorites. So yeah, the Idris. Let's go down and take a look. I mean, we're not going to be able to see much. I don't think we can get inside. I haven't actually tested yet. You're experiencing it with me. We've had leaks about the Idris all all week. Can I? Is there an invisible wall? There's an invisible wall! So yeah, this is the, the Idris M. You can tell that by the giant railgun on the front of it. However, the Idris K um, is going to be available for Idris P owners. And basically what that is, is a <laughs> the invisible wall, mate. Um, the Idris Gay is going to be like a, I think it looks like a $250 um, upgrade pack, which gives you a big energy beam weapon. And that's going to be a beam weapon rather than a laser. So it's going to be constant. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a lot of power to use. Um, uh, it also upgrades uh, some other parts of the ship. It gives it a, a missile turret and it um, upgrades a load of the normal turrets to point defense systems, basically giving a slightly more military feel oh no no we can get down we can get further down let's do that now it looked like it was 250 dollars to me i don't actually own uh, an interest i know some people think i own every ship i really do not oh no oh he's fine good the landing gear is about as big as most of my ships actually significantly bigger what am i talking about Oh my god. So this is uh, obviously not the finished asset, the Idris. It's still a work in progress. They are going to polish the hell out of these because they are in Squadron 42. Probably the Stanton though. I know it will be very, very slightly different. By that, what I mean is the assets inside will be dialed out very slightly differently when it comes to props, and there might be um, some like slightly different systems inside that would make it slightly more unique than an off the shelf Idris M. I think Moro's literally um, tweaked some of the systems and stuff like that, for example. And obviously, it's going to be like effectively a tier zero super um, high quality asset. I'm not really sure what to show you with it. It's too big for me to get a proper look at. And I can't get inside it. Turrets are massive. I do like the fact that obviously there's the entry at the front. Which, let's run up to the front. Not the best camera work in the world, admittedly. But you get my charming pulsate tones. It's just big. So yeah, a load of um, Idris and... I say a load. Uh, some Idris and Javelin hulls went on sale. And at time of recording, which was a few seconds after the sale went live, uh, all of the store credit Idris and uh, and the Javelins, all of the Javelins were sold. Um, I believe there were still some uh, war bond Idrises left. Idris P's. Were... $1,300 for me, which is the including VAT price, which is 20%. Um, VAT in the UK, it's not great. But, um, so yeah, the front and the rear of the Idris open up um, to allow for the, the ships to exit. So they are pretty armoured while that's closed. That railgun, oh, that is going to cause some misery. The idea of the, the K kit compared to the, uh, the Idris M is the K is not as good um, damage output wise to a single ship like this this railgun is going 
going to take down some larger ships. Um, and the military version is like more armored and, and that sort of stuff as well. It's a, it's a solid civilian upgrade. And I believe that all the current Idris owners are able to upgrade uh, to the Idris K from the Idris P. It's big. It's hard to get a good view of all of it because it's just so big. I'll try and get some beauty shots for another video. I'm sure they'll talk about it a reasonable amount uh, in today's like anniversary special ATV ship shape thingy that they do. Yeah, let's check out the rest of the hall. So what do we have in Hall A? We've got some Gladius straight up on the stairs. Arrow is going to be on every floor, but that's an Andal ship. We are here for Aegis Dynamics. I, I love Drake, but I mean, Aegis Dynamics are just amazing. Like, they're amazing. They have amazing ships. I love stuff like the Gladiuses. They're fantastic. I regret um, upgrading some of my Gladius to other ships. We got the Aegis Eclipse here as well. What do we have over here? We've got some Sabres over here. Got the Sabre Comet. Oh, we do have the Raven as well on display. I did not think it was going to be. Well, we'll see if it's rentable and flyable actually. Sabre. I think the Sabre's probably my favorite single seater combat dogfighter ship. Oh, people can rent the Raven. I was wrong. I didn't think the Raven or the Mustang Omega were going to be rentable. They are. That's good to know. I love these expo halls. Like, it Star Citizen is trying to parody sort of like real life now with certain things. Um, does... A mixture of fun and realism is the, the idea of it. At the moment, obviously, it is uh, a big alpha test of a lot of stuff. We've got the Hammerhead here. I recommend that everyone that can try the Hammerhead, try the Saber. Um, what else? What else is super fun? I mean, if you're looking for a starter ship a little bit better than your, the normal starters, uh, the Avenger Titan. The Hammerhead is the first flyable Corvette we have in-game. The Avengers are amazing, like, second-tier starter ships. Really love the range they've got of them as well. We've got the Titan, we've got the Stalker, we've got the Renegade, and we've got the Warlock. Warlock with the EMP. I prefer the Raven, but the Raven is a promo ship. We've got the Retaliator here as well. Torpedo Bomber, a medium-sized. Really, really cool-looking ship. Um, I think it's going to get a, a few little few little updates to it. It's obviously got some modularity internally as well. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to have modularity uh, when it comes to the uh, Avengers. I, I think we probably still will. We'll probably still be able to switch out the, the central parts of them um, when they'll be fully modular, but they might become variants. Uh, have to wait and see. The Vanguards I have issues with, okay? And the issue with is, at the moment, they're not great. But I love them. Like, I want to almost upgrade my Sabre into um, one of these bad boys. So, this is the Hoplite. And the Hoplite's cool because it's got a load of front-facing killing power um, that the pilot can bring to bear. It's got those four big lasers on the front. Pew, 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 pew! And then a, just a giant gun mount um, for, for extra cleanness. A load of missiles. Got a turret on the top that are... Uh, gunner can use but also it's got room in the rear for a load of people and up until the valkyrie was sort of like oh yeah i really want this ship um, for my, 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 my mission ship but the valkyrie came along and made me think oh i would like to bring a vehicle along as well so i just like this obviously it's going to be heavily used for squadron 42 um the the reason it sort of like made it flyable and they basically the redeemer sort of like almost got a bit put on the back burner because they went, uh, oh, we want to do this hoplite instead. That's that's the way I think 
um, it happened. Although you've got the Valkyrie, you've got a load of other ships now that do what the original idea of the Redeemer was going to do. And the Redeemer is on sale today as well. And we'll go for the sale ships in a second. And then you've got that just that standard Ant Guard Warden. Um, extra survivable is the idea. But the Sentinel is like an EM, not EMP, an electronic warfare version. Uh, which I'm really interested in getting. I think I probably will um, grab one during the sale. Uh, and then you've got the Harbinger, which is the sort of like missile, high DPS version. Uh, probably pretty expensive to run though. Let's uh, jump into the other hall though. Hammerhead, super imposing, super cool. I finally, finally was able to get to this floor on the expo. Um, every time I tried to get into the single elevator, uh, someone would push a button to go to a different floor that I didn't want to go to. Um, admittedly, it was only for like three or four minutes, but it was still pretty annoying. So we got, we got some more Gladius on this floor. Got the Reclaimer. Definitely try the Reclaimer. Just, oh, I'm not sure if raising the landing gear would be a good idea on the expo floor. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> It'd be amazing if it just fell out. <laughs> if it just fell. Oh, my God. I mean, they need at least, like, strings or something holding it up. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> of course, of course it was going to... That. Got the sabers displayed again over here. No Raven this time, though. And we've got the Avengers over here. So it's just this floor. Just for the Reclaimer, basically, as an addition. It's a big, cool ship. Hasn't got any of the mechanics yet, really, for it, other than flying around big. So maybe the Hammerhead um, would, would be a lot more fun. Trying to land this on a planet, though, or messing around with it. Um, doing some role play ops. Uh, the salvage. This is the big salvage boy. So, Edge's Dynamics. What have we got? We've got the Avenger Titan and all the other Avenger series. So, the Warlock, the Renegade, and the Stalker. We've got the Gladius. So, you can get a Gladius if you get 10 referrals, 10 recruits as well. Um, for some people, that will be very viable. For others, um, not so much. Um, but the Titan is very high on my list at the moment of ships that I recommend people potentially upgrade to. Um, see if there's a starter pack sale on the 30th. Um, the 1st? It'll be the first? It'll be December 1st. Uh, then maybe upgrade to that if you're, if you're looking for something a little bit better than a normal starter ship. Uh, Sabre. Love the Sabre. Especially now that it's only $170 and the Super Hornet's $185, I think. Um, I prefer a Sabre to the Super Hornet, personally. Uh, because I, I just like the idea of agility and stealth and of more high-tech components. Um, yeah, the, definitely the, the Super Hornet's got the slugging capability and it's going to be much preferable to some. But um, I just, I just look, the, the Sabre appeals to me. Appeals to my playstyle. Got the Vanguards, um, which I talked about. Got the Retaliator. Clips. We've got the Reclaimer. The big boy. We've got the, the Hammerhead. Now... Uh, they're all flyable, what we just went over. Uh, some other Aegis ships which are not flyable, uh, but are on sale today, are the uh, Retaliator base. So, when you buy a Retaliator base, basically you get a Retaliator bomber. Um, the, the Retaliator base is supposed to be sort of like, you can then customise it with modules internally. Uh, they're still working on that. We'll start to see more modular ships probably next year, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we've got the Aegis Vulcan as well. This is the arm, um, rearm, repair, refuel, sort of like dream ship. Um, medium size, got drones. They go out and they do the tasks that they've been given um, when it comes to rearming, refueling and repairing, helping out others in the verse is the idea. Great service ships, great service beacon ships. Um, we've got the Redeemer. Look, now... We know the Redeemer is eventually going to become a big gunship now, rather than a dropship. Um, it's going to be boom, boom, boom. Um, so, we don't know what form exactly that's going to take yet. Uh, assume similar design, sort of like language, um, obviously massively updated for the current direction of Aegis uh, and the sort of like new techniques that um, the Star Citizen guys are using. 
it wasn't built by the Star Citizen team. It was built um, by the, the guys that won the next great starship. Um, and it is cool, but it's been totally, it's, it's getting totally reconcepted, basically, to become a gunship. So bear that in mind. We've got the Vanguard Sentinel and the Vanguard Harbinger as well. Um, I might pick up the Sentinel myself. I like the idea of, of, of a much heavier sort of fighter, not a dogfighter necessarily, uh, but something that is able to um, rip apart ships in an engagement if it gets the, the correct sort of strafe on them. Uh, it's a very, very cool idea for a ship, and it's going to have that electronic warfare aspect as well, which will make it quite interesting. Um, makes it interesting for a content point of view as well for me. Now, we still have some Idris P's on sale. Um, these are war bond ones, which means they need to be bought with real money. Um, and we have uh, Javelins and the Idrises um, currently sold out. And we might see some waves of ships get added. Um, I'll drop some tweets and stuff out and I'll post all the details um, in the uh, description of the video and down in the comments below. But what did you think of today's expo? Are you going to be picking up any of the ships you've seen so far? Were you holding out for like a javelin or something crazy like that instead of, you know, upgrading hardware or a computer? But no, don't let me, don't let me hardware shame you. Um, were you looking for something like that uh, but weren't able to get it? Are you interested in more details of the Idris K stuff and upgrading an Idris P? Um, because I think there's going to be some waived sales of that as well. I will put some more informations in the description but tell me what you think in the comments below each day of the anniversary free flight the matadors are giving away two star citizen drake loot and scoot deluxe ship packages they contain a copy of star citizen a cutlass black with pirate skin and a dragonfly yellow jacket matadors are a star citizen pirate organization focused on pvp they are looking for active players both old and new who want to get involved with group play and focused piracy gameplay but also touch on industry and exploration they have a huge range of ships for their members to use and are pretty damn self-sufficient. They are a banterous and extrovert bunch though, so be aware. Some would refer to them as infamous. They are, however, giving away a load of ill-gotten gains on my channel as prizes, so who am I to complain? Please check out more information about them in the links below. To have a chance of winning though, be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my videos on the channel from the 23rd to the 30th of November. Each day I will select two winners from videos that were created that day and announce them all on the 1st of December. So that's 14 chances to win plus the normal monthly giveaway of the Saber Raven. If you are considering getting or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or any other game for that matter, Instead, consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It's a subscription-based service that leverages your internet connection to turn any appropriate device, whether it be an old PC, smartphone, tablet, and more into a powerful Windows 10 gaming PC. It's been working well in the latest 3.3.0 PTU batch of Star Citizen. I'm gonna try and maintain a best practices guide on my website as well. More information is available in the links below, and if you do decide to try it, use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. Discount. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the verse.